everyone, it's Sarah Satch. Welcome to my crochet channel. For today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to make this cowl that will work for any size dog or pet. Now I had some leftover yarn from the video I did that was the Lisa Ann cowl and ear warmer. And so I thought that it would be fun to use this wonderful soft wool yarn from Red Heart to make our cowl for our dog. This cute little cowl will work for any size dog or pet. And I'll explain to you how to adjust that when we get a little bit farther in the video. What you're going to need is some yarn and it can be any yarn that's a worsted weight or a medium weight number four yarn. Takes about maybe an ounce to an ounce and a half or more if you're making it for a bigger dog. We're going to be using an H hook today and my H hook is a 5.00 millimeter H hook. You're also going to need a needle for weaving in your ends and a pair of scissors. And the last thing that you're going to need is a tape measure so that you can measure your dog's neck. Maximo and Rosie's neck is approximately 12 inches. Now you want to make it a little bit loose, so you may want to add an inch or two just for comfort. It's totally up to you and how you want the cow to fit your dog. I'm going to be doing the video for a 12 inch neck today. So for a 12 inch neck, I need to chain 36 chains because three chains equal one inch. Since Maximo and Rosie's neck are both about 12 inches, I'm going to chain 36 chains because three times 12 is 36. So we're going to begin with our slip knot, and then I'm going to chain loosely 36 chains. We don't want to chain it too tightly or the bottom of your cow will pucker up. If you have a tendency to make your initial chain too tight, you can always go up to the next size up in your crochet hook. For instance, we're using an H hook today. You could use an I hook just for the initial chains and then go back to your H hook for the rest of the project. I do that sometimes if I have a large amount of chains to do so that I don't stitch them too tightly. I've chained my 36 chains and now I need to join it in a circle and we need to be careful not to twist it and I just lay it flat out like this then we'll put our hook in that first chain right there yarn over and just go through both of those loops that's a slip stitch and then we're going to chain three our first row that we're going to make we're going to make double crochets the chain three counts as our first double crochet. Yarn over, go in the next chain, pull up a loop. You'll have three loops on your hook. Yarn over, go through the first two, yarn over and go through the second two. That's our double crochet. And we're going to place one double crochet in each of the chains around. Now we began with 36 chains and throughout the entire cowl your stitch count is not going to change. So if you added or subtracted chains to fit your dog or pet's neck, that count is going to stay the same for the whole project. So I stitched 36 and so my project will have 36 stitches on every row. So I'm just going to continue stitching one double crochet in each double crochet 
around for this first row. I finished this first row of double crochets and now I'm going to join to the chain three. Here's the chain three we started with. At the top, put your hook through, pull a loop through, then pull that loop through the loop that's already on your hook. That's a slip stitch. Now we're only going to chain one. This next row, we're only going to play single crochets, not double crochets. The chain one does not count as a stitch and we're going to just start stitching going in that very first stitch. And just in case you're not sure what a single crochet is, go in the stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over and go through both loops. That's a single crochet. And we'll just place one single crochet on each double crochet around. One single crochet in each double crochet, working all the way around our cowl. And when we get back around, we'll join to the top of our first single crochet, and then we're going to change colors. So I stitched my row of single crochet all the way around. Now I'm going to join, there we go, to that first single crochet with a slip stitch. And now I'm going to place my new color in. I'm not going to cut off my first color. We're going to just let it trail there. And then I'm going to chain two. One, two. So this first chain two counts as a half double crochet. So our next stitch is going to be a triple. You wrap your yarn around your hook two times, but not too tightly. Go in your first stitch and pull up a loop. There'll be four loops on your hook. Yarn over and go through the first two. Yarn over, go through the second two. Yarn over and go through the last two. Our next stitch is a half double crochet. So we're just going to yarn over, go through the stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, and go through all three of those loops. And we're going to be stitching this all the way around, alternating triples and half double crochets. So here's another triple. And the next stitch is a half double crochet. triple, and a half double crochet in the next stitch. And you can see it makes a little bit of a bumpy stitch, a little bit of a texture, and it's really pretty. And we'll continue this all the way around this row. Triple, half double crochet, triple, half double crochet. Triple and half double crochet all the way around. So just to repeat, we're alternating triple crochet stitches and half double crochet stitches all the way around this row. I finished the first texture row of the triple 
half double crochet alternating all the way around. So now we need to join. We ended with a triple crochet and we're going to join in the top of the chain two which counts as our half double crochet. And now I'm going to join back in my other color. So I've got my gray here that's on the inside. We're going to join that back in. Snug your purple one down or your second color because you may be using different colors than I am. There we go. And now we're going to chain four. This first chain four counts as our triple crochet. And the way row two works is we're going to place triples where the half double crochets are and half double crochets where the triples are. We're still alternating. We're just going to be off by one so that, like I said, the triples are in the halves and the halves are in the triples. So we chained four and it counts as our first triple. So our next stitch is a half double crochet and we'll stitch it in the top of the triple. We stitched our half double crochet in the triple, so now we're going to stitch a triple in the next half double crochet. And we'll repeat it like this all the way around. Half double crochet, triple crochet. half double crochet, triple crochet. And we're still doing the texture stitch, but you can see the half double crochets are in the triples and the triples are in the half double crochets and it just makes another row of really fun stitches. Half double crochet, triple, half double crochet, triple. We will continue this all the way around this row, alternating stitches, triples and half double crochets, and then when we get back around, we'll join again just like we did and then we'll change colors again. So we finished our second row of our fun texture stitch row. And we're going to join to the top of this chain four that counted as our first triple crochet with a slip stitch. And now we're going to change back to our second color. We'll do it the same way. We'll just grab it in, snug that down, and remember we're not cutting our yarn, we're letting it trail on the back or on the inside. All right, so now we're going to chain two and we're going to repeat what we did on this first purple row. We started with a half double crochet and then we'll stitch a triple in the next stitch. and we're repeating half double crochet, triple, half double crochet, triple. Making sure that you stitch your triples in half double crochets and your half double crochets in your triples. And so what we're going to do is we're going to repeat these two rows. We're doing another row like this one and then we'll do another row of the gray alternating the triples and the half double crochets. Triple, half double crochet. Triple, half double crochet. There we go. All the way around and we're going to repeat these two rows one more time. I repeated the two rows like these two 
It makes a really fun, bumpy cowl. And if you're doing this for a larger dog, you may want to add more rows in here. Or if you're doing it for a smaller dog, you may want to add less rows. I guess I should say subtract some rows. <laughs> the length of this is up to you and your puppy. All right, so we're going to be finished with the gray. And so I'm going to go ahead and cut that off. And we'll get that out of the way. And now we're going to do the last uh, portion, the, the last part of the trim or the band. We're going to join our purple back in. And we're going to place one single crochet in each stitch around. And um, it can be a little confusing, but if you just look at those braids on the top, just make sure you put a stitch in each one of those. So we'll go in. Pull up a loop, yarn over, and finish our single crochet. And we're just placing one single crochet in each of the stitches around. We'll work all the way around the bottom of our cowl, stitching one single crochet in each of the stitches around, and then we'll join to that first single crochet when we get around. I have stitched the row of the single crochet all the way around. I'm going to join to that first single crochet with a slip stitch and then chain three. And we're chaining three because we're going to place one double crochet in each of the single crochets around. Our chain three counts as our first double crochet, so we'll just begin stitching in that next stitch and stitch one double crochet in each of the single crochets around. I think Maximo is snoring here in the background. <laughs> Poor puppy, he's really tired. So to finish off our cowl, we're just placing one double crochet in each of the single crochets all the way around, and then we'll join to the top of our chain three. The row of double crochet is all completed. And now I'm going to join to the top of that chain three with a slip stitch. And then I'm going to cut my yarn. I'm going to put my hook behind in the next stitch and pull that loop to the back and then tie that off. And I want you to see the inside. Here's where we started with the purple, and here's our other purple and green. If we would have cut off every row, we would have to weave in all of these. But since we just carried the yarn across, we don't have to. And we'll just use our needle. And we'll go one way going through stitches, and then come back the other way. That one's a little bit short. One thing to remember when you're working with different colors is try to stay in the color because you don't want the other color to show through on the front that's not the same color. Now we'll come back and weave these in later. This is the completed cowl 
And the other thing that it needs is the tie. And the way we do that, see here's this one with the tie. The way that we do that is we just chain about 30 or more chains. And you need to be careful about how long you make your chain for the tie because you don't want the tie to get caught in your dog's toenails or in their teeth or their paws when they're walking around and playing. I stick with about 30, but if you're making one for a bigger dog, you may want to make your chain longer. Just make sure when you tie the tie that it's not going to get stuck, like I said, in their paws or their teeth. All right, we'll cut that string, and I always just tie that off, snug that down, and then just make another knot as close to that chain as I possibly can, and give it a, a good hard pull, and clip it off. And we'll do that where we started as well. Pull it really close to that chain. Give it a good hard pull, because we don't want our chain to come undone. There we go, got stuck in my nail. All right, so all we need to do is just decide where you want to put your tie. Put your tie through. And make a bow. Now, if you're worried about it coming off, you can always add a second knot if you want to. But that's how we make this cute little cow that will work for any size dog or pet. I'm calling this the Dress Up Your Dog Day Cow. <laughs>